it, Mummy? There's no plane up in the sky. Hi guys, welcome back to my hangar. Today we're going to talk about my latest build in the Master Series, the P-47 Razorback. Well, here she is guys the flak test master series p47 this is my second build in the master series uh, my first being the corsair but i've done a lot more work to this one than i have the corsair i have used a removable wing design on this one as well um, perfected it a little bit further uh, it works really well i've been, been really happy with it on the corsair um, but I've added uh, a few other things to this one. I've added some scoops and I've added the guns and um, worked on a few things with the, the trailing edge and, and some things like that. So let's start and we'll go through and I'll, I'll take you through it. The first thing that I want to address is the color scheme. Uh, it's not an accurate representation of any particular aircraft, um, so don't pick on it, please. Um, it's just a fictitious scheme that I've based on a couple of different liveries that I've seen. Um, the second thing I'd like to talk about um, is the, the question I keep getting asked is, what's the silver material? Everyone wants to know. It's actually... Avery sign graphic material that I've gotten from a sign writing company, uh, which works great. Um, it's lightweight, got a really good adhesive on the back. Um, it's a metallized mylar, and uh, it's a bit thicker than a space blanket or something like that, so you don't get those little wrinkles in it. And uh, it smooths out across the paper really well. I've only had a couple of little spots that give me some problematic wrinkles, but Overall, great. Fantastic. Now, I've also had a friend print me a WASP radial engine for this thing, and I've detailed it out, but sadly, uh, it's just a hair too big to fit inside the cowl, so I'm going to redo another one. Uh, about uh, 10 mil smaller, and uh, it should fit fine. Come out really well, though. I'll put up a link to the STL file, but you'll have to resize it to whatever you need. I spent a lot of time trying to find just the right nose art, and this is what I've settled on. The name's going to be Lost Innocence. I think it's pretty appropriate. I've still got some work to do to get the final drawing on the nose. It'll be reprinted in color on clear decal paper. I've added dowels to the leading edge of the wings, uh, just like I did on the Corsair. And it gives it strength and it also gives it that nice rounded feel. Over the top of that, I've applied some paper labels to smooth it all out. I also eliminated the double thickness on the horizontal stabilizer and replaced that with a dowel on the leading edge for strength.
I know you're all thinking those guns aren't going to last long, but I've actually embedded some small dowels deeply in the wing to give it a weak point so that the end of that barrel can break off if it needs to. They're just paper straws. So I've wrapped a few extra, cut a few extra, so when they get broken off, they just get replaced. Easy. Now, I'll take a minute to kind of show you how I've done these vents on the side. All it is is a piece of small piece of clear plastic um, that I've actually wrapped in the covering and cut a slot in the side and just glued it in place. That's all there is to it. Um, decals went over the top of it, and man, it looks fantastic. Super easy. Did that with the uh, front exhaust stacks and vents as well. And now for the canopy. Um, this has got to be the most involved process of the entire build. I go way overboard, but the end result is so worth it. I usually start by making the rough shape out of foam or something like that. Um, then I usually pull a plaster cast off of that and then make a positive mold from that. But in this case, I decided to make my final blank out of MDF block. I just put that on the vacuum former and pulled a couple of canopies and picked the one that I like best and just attached it to the fuselage with aluminum tape as the frame. Okay, now we'll have a look at the underside. Um, here's a good look at the scoops and exhaust stacks that I put in. Um, I just used some uh, a bit of uh, large tubing that I had and wrapped it and cut a hole and stuck it in. And uh, I've made the vents the same as I've made the, the side vents. Now I'll take a second here to talk about how I've done the wing tips. Um, this material doesn't conform really well to very tight compound curves. So um, what I've had to do is I've cut it in small strips and just done small strips from the trailing edge around to the leading edge and then overlap that with the top and the bottom sheet of covering. Seems to cover pretty well uh, and looks pretty nice. You don't get any wrinkles that way. Here's another look at that fuselage vent. I started using the flosser picks for the control horns as well. I found that it works really nice. Okay, now for the um, removable wing. Um, I put a lot of time into the mechanics of this to try to make sure that everything is strong and is going to hold really well. I'm really happy with it. Um, this has turned out a little bit better than the Corsair. You'll notice I've put some thin weather stripping on the top of the hatch just to hold that wing really nice and snug. Here's a look at the locking tab assembly I put in the back of the wing. It's just a solid piece of wood running through the trailing edge um, and glued in place. You'll see here that I've also positioned some weather stripping on the inside of the fuselage on the wing itself to help with the wing location. I've strengthened the fuselage structure and saddle area with some really thin balsa that I've just uh, Gorilla glued in place uh, and clamped in.
Here's another change that I made for holding in the motor pot. Instead of running skewers all the way through the fuselage, I've cut two small pieces on the inside and actually attached them from the inside of the motor pot out. It works really well. Here's a look at the slot in the back of the fuselage to hold the wing in. The foam has actually been covered with paper and Gorilla Glue and the magnets embedded inside the paper. I'm going to say again how much I really like this removable wing design. There's nothing in the way. Everything opens up so you have easy access to electronics and batteries and everything. And it works a treat. It does not come apart. I've used plenty of magnets on this and it really holds well. I wanted to show you a couple of tools that I've made um, that I'm going to use more of in the future. Um, this one I really like. It's uh, I'm a cabinet maker by trade, so I tend to get a little creative. But I um, always like the trailing ed edges to be nice and flat and come to a nice sharp edge. I, I never like that 5 mil that you always see on the back of the edge. Um, so I wanted to find a way to fix that. What I've come up with is um, I, I've taken two pieces of MDF and uh, I actually put a piano hinge um, attaching the two pieces together and I put a piece of um, sandpaper on the top so it doesn't slide. What happens is you just sandwich the foam board in there and put a couple of clamps on that. The sandpaper keeps it from squirting out um, and uh, leave that for a couple of hours. Come back and take it out and you've got a nice beautiful trailing edge. Works really well. Now you can either do it before or after you wrap it with whatever material you're going to use. Um, and that works really well. Now, um, another thing that I made, I spent a bit of time on, um, is I wanted to see if I could come up with a way to add rivets um, that look pretty good. Now, there's some debate about this, um, but uh, I've made some perforated holes, um, and I made a tool to actually do that. Now, the end result, now the end result looks really nice. Um, now I know what you're thinking. It's going to take away from the strength and it's going to break in half and all that kind of thing. Well, the way I see it is when we cover it with something else over the top of this paper, um, be it vinyl or colored tape or in this case the Avery graphic material, um, it's not actually taking any strength away. I've done this a couple of times, tried to break it, and haven't been able to. But uh, all you do is take your ruler or straight edge, put it where you want, and just roll that along, perforating the holes where you want your panel lines, um, or rivets I should say. And if you want actual panel lines, you can also run a dull edge down your straight edge and make your panel line itself. But uh, I'm going to try that out in the future. I didn't do it on the P47. Uh, we'll see how that goes next time. Well, I uh, hope you've enjoyed the mods and upgrades for the uh, Master Series P47. Uh, maiden video will be coming soon. Um, depending on if I can get all my flight crew together and the weather will cooperate. Um, I'm still going to continue to build the Master Series and uh, I'll keep adding these videos as I do. Um, I may even work the A-10 in there. Uh, it's not, I know it's not a Master Series but uh, I'll make it a Master Series. Um, other than that, keep them flying guys. We've got a lot of uncertain times ahead of us with all this, uh, this regulations going on. But if we stand together, we'll pull through it, okay? Uh, remember, they look better in the air than in the ground. Thanks, guys.